Hello, FST kids. Um, we are actually moving on to 5.9, where we're going to be talking about the secant, cosecant, and cotangent functions. Now, this, is, this isn't the first time you've been introduced to secant, cosecant, and cotangent, nor will it probably be the last, but um, let's do a quick review on how to how the secant, cosecant, and cotangent connect with sine, cosine, and tangent themselves. So our objective for our um, lesson today is uh, students will be able to understand the relationships between trigonometric functions and their reciprocal functions, evaluate the reciprocal functions, and understand the properties of their graphs. Our main focus for today is going to be to understand the relationships between trigonometric functions and their reciprocal functions. That's our main goal here. Okay. The purpose of this is that in simplifying and solving trigonometric functions, it can be easier to use the reciprocal functions. The reciprocal functions are especially used in calculus. Okay, so probably won't get to calculus at Browning, but for you guys, some of you guys are really looking into taking some calculus or pre-calculus at the community college level, which I would encourage you to do once we're back and things are back to normal. Um, so this is, you know, really great review and really great knowledge to, to take with you because you'll be expected to know this information. Okay, so let's talk about the reciprocal trigonometric function. So you know that we have our sine, cosine, and tangent functions here, okay? Well, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent and you can see the reciprocal function in the fact that cosecant is one over sine it's literally sine put over one and flipped and vice versa the sine is one over cosecant so you can actually go from cosecant to sine and from sine to cosecant by just taking what it equals and flipping it and the same thing goes for cosine and secant secant to cosine tangent to cotangent and cotangent to tangent. So they're essentially just the flips of each other. That's what reciprocal means. Okay. So if we take a look in words, right, our secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function. Our cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. And our cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent function. Hopefully you remember the abbreviations for these guys, okay? So secant is SEC, cosecant is CSC, and cotangent is COT. And just for you, Steve, please do not say sec, sc, and cot, okay? We say secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So we want to make sure that we pronounce the abbreviated functions there. So just in case you missed it here, Okay, secant is the uh, the flip of cosecant. So, I'm sorry, flip of cosine. My apologies. So that means if I have the secant is one over cosine theta. If cosine theta is equal to x, then secant theta is equal to one over x. Makes sense, right? Um, for cosecant theta, cosecant theta is one over sine of theta. And on our unit circle, right, these are straight from our unit circles. So our sine theta on our unit circle is equal to y. So cosecant theta is equal to 1 over y. Okay. And then lastly, <clears throat> cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent theta. Well, tangent theta on the unit circle is equal to y over x, sine over cosine. But we flip that for cotangent and it becomes cosine over sine aka x over y okay and of course in each one of these cases our denominators cannot be zero if our denominators are zero then it is undefined okay um, really take a look at your unit circle and remind yourself that our x and our y are cosine and sine tangent is always equal to sine over cosine okay now our goal is to actually complete the trig chart that we have on the back of our unit circle. 
So we've gone ahead and we've filled in the, the degrees, the radians, sine, cosine, and tangent values. But we, what we want to do now is we want to take these values, and if we haven't already, we want to fill in our reciprocal functions. So we want to take all of this and uh, flip it with the functions that match. So for our zero here, it should be pretty simple. Sine matches with cosecant. So put zero over one. And when you put zero over one, you end up getting, um, let's see here, can I do this? No, nope, okay, take that back. Um, so zero over one, and when we flip that bit, that becomes one over zero, which actually makes this undefined. For cosine to secant, cosine, I have a one here for zero degrees, so that means one over one. Flip that, we still get one over one, which is still, one for secant. Tangent is also zero, zero over one, and we get one over zero, which is also undefined, okay? But let's take a look at um, these guys over here, like the 30 degrees or pi over six, 45 degrees or pi over four. How do we then go, go ahead and how do we figure out what the reciprocal values are? Well, again, sine is to cosecant, so sine is one over two, flip that, that becomes two over here, okay? So um, let's, let me talk through the pi over six once more. Over here, we have square root of three over two for cosine. We're gonna flip that for secant. That's gonna become two over the square root of three. Rationalize that, you'll get two radical three over three, okay? And then over here, flip that, you get the square root of, uh, you get three over the square root of three, rationalize that, and you'll just get square root of three here. We've worked through these before, um, but let's see here. We have evaluate the six trigonometric functions at each given angle measure. So if we take a look at theta is equal to pi over three, okay, a basic thing, theta is equal to pi over three. Well, on our unit circle, when theta is equal to pi over three, Sine is the square root of three over two. Cosine is one half. Tangent is the square root of three over two over one half. And when we simplify that, we simply get the square root of three, okay? Literally just put the fractions over each other and um, you can uh, see the simplification of that, okay? Well, in order to get the cosecant, secant, and cotangent that, that go for our theta is equal to pi over three, cosecant matches with sine. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna flip it. And so I'm gonna get two over the square root of three. Um, and I need to rationalize that. So two over the square root of three, multiply top and bottom by the square root of three, I get two square root of three over three. Okay, cosine is linked with secant. So we're gonna flip that. One over two gets flipped and becomes two over one, which just simplifies to two. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So I take square root of three, put it over one, flip it. I'm gonna get one over the square root of three. I rationalize it, I get square root of three over three. Okay, um, over here, I hope that made sense to you. We're literally flipping, and if we have a radical in our denominator, we are simply just rationalizing that denominator. Um, so if I have the theta is equal to negative pi over two, okay? Again, I use my unit circle, and I can get my sine and my cosine. Negative pi over two is the equivalent of three pi over two. So you're looking at your um, 270 degree mark there. At that mark, your sine is equal to negative one because it's down below in the unit circle. Your cosine is equal to zero. Tangent is equal to negative one over zero, which is undefined, okay? Um, now, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine or uses, is, yeah, is the reciprocal of sine. So I put negative one over one. 
and I'm still going to get negative 1 because I have negative 1 divided by 1, which is still negative 1. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Put 0 over 1, flip it, that becomes 1 over 0. Cannot divide by 0. That's undefined there. Now for tangent, we have undefined. Now, in, the way we got tangent was we did negative one over zero. So that's what we take our y over x here, our sine over cosine, negative one over zero, and we flip that. And when we flip it, it becomes zero over negative one, which is zero, okay? I want you guys to go through and fill in the rest of your unit circle. Um, for your cosecant, secant, and cotangent for each one of your thetas. Um, and then uh, that's essentially your goal for today and for this lesson is to fill in your unit circle um, and check it. it I will uh, try to post a answer key for you as soon as I can, um, but that's your goal.